let, let's get ready. We're going to we're going to dive into the book of Joshua and and family. If you're able to turn your camera on, go go for it. I know it's early in the morning. Come on, but I I want to see some smiling faces too. So talk talk back to me in the chat because you know I'm gonna be on fire about in ten minutes and I'm my passion is gonna be through the roof because I love the word of God. But hey, talk to me in the chat. Turn your camera on if you're able. But what I love about the book of Joshua, family. What I love about the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua, it's it's a transitional book. And come on, just raise your hand if you're able. How many of us believe that this is a year of transition? Man, man, you're transitioning from, from one thing to another thing. That, 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 hey, man, I'm transitioning out of this, but I'm stepping into this. It can be it can be internal, man. God, I'm transitioning my mindset. My gosh, this is going to be the year where where my my mindset and I I, I prayed this even yesterday and I caught it in the spirit. And I'm gonna speak it right now, man. So many people deal with with intrusion thoughts throughout the day that you can be focused in on something and your mind is under attack. My God, this is the year. Come on, somebody, sit in his presence, sit with him and say, God, protect my mind. I give my mind. I'm going through it. I'm transitioning from that. That season is over and I'm getting ready to step into something even greater. I'm getting ready. God, give me a greater mind. Give me a greater heart. I'm, we're transitioning. This is what the book of Joshua is all about. It's a book of, 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 the, of Israel being in the wilderness through Exodus. And now we come to Joshua and they're transitioning. They're, 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 they're transitioning. They're, they're entering, entering into the promised land. The, the, in other words, this is a transitional season. And here's what we have to learn, family, in order to experience the beauty and, and, and the, the, the greatness in the, in the next season, we have to learn how to handle our now season. So, so they had to learn some things in Exodus in order to appreciate some things in Joshua in the promised land. Are you walking with me? But, but, but it's a book of tra transitional. Another historical fact, what I love about the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua, it, it reminds me of the book of Acts. Here's what I mean by that. When we read the book of Acts, it's a continuity, continuity, it's, it continues. So you read the Gospels, but the Gospel just doesn't stop at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We continue to read the book of Acts, it's the continuation. It's the same thing with the book of Joshua. We, we, we have the first five books, and that's where... When you're reading in the Old Testament, it talks about the first five books, the books of the law. It's, it's talking about Genesis, it's talking about Exodus, it's talking about all those early books. But the, it doesn't end there. That's what, I, that's what I'm putting the emphasis on. It doesn't end there. Their story doesn't end there. Your story doesn't end there. In, in Mark, Luke, in, in the gospel, the story didn't end there. There's a continuation of what God is getting ready to do. Joshua is the same thing. No, they did not. No, their story did not end in the wilderness. There's a continuation there. Receive that word right now. Wherever you are, there's a continuation to your story. That there's a turning of the page. That there's a new chapter. I know you can't see the next chapter right now for some of us, but I'm here to I'm here to speak into your life right now that there's a new chapter. Here's a continuation. And this is the beauty of Joshua. And we go and we kick started and this is how I'm going to be flowing for the next few 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 weeks with you guys. As we go through the chapters, I'm going to be pulling out key verses I believe that God wants us to speak about throughout the um throughout the 21 days. So we'll go through chapter 1 and I want to kick started right here. I'm going to be reading from the CSB. And it says this family it says in Joshua 1 verse 1. I love this. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my Moses, my my servant is dead. Moses, my my servant is dead. And in other words, the one that was the one that you are familiar with leading you 
is no longer here. See, see, Moses was anointed to, to survive in the wilderness. My God, Moses had an anointing to thrive in the wilderness atmosphere. Moses had the grace to survive. But my God, Joshua, what they was getting ready, Joshua was a fighter. Joshua goes to war. And, and God was preparing Joshua because going into the promised land, the land was already given to them, but they still had to conquer it. And, and, and Joshua had a different anointing, anointed by the same person, but he had a different grace to go do what God has called him to do. And what, what, am I, what are you saying, PA? Here's what I'm saying. Sometimes we can be married to, to, to past methods on how to complete things. Moses, my gosh, Moses can be a, a old method in your life. I'm used to doing this in order to produce this. I'm used to this preference in order to get this result. I, I, I'm used to being what it could be on. I'm used to this. I'm comfortable here at this job, but God is calling you to do something else. God is pushing you to do something else. Don't don't hit, don't embrace Moses too long or don't moan, mourn over Moses too long because you might miss the Joshua that's getting ready to rise up inside of you. That there's a Joshua that, that is trying to rise up, but we're hanging on Moses a little bit too long. I speak to all of the business leaders that's on the call right now that God can call you to begin to shift methods Hear me when I say this, the principle never change. Sometimes the preference needs to. The principle is still the same that God wants you to go do great things. But what could, 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 could your method this year be changing? Could your preference this year be changing? And God is telling, telling Joshua, hey, that season is over. That season is coming to an end. But I'm getting ready to do something better for you. And then he says, now you, come on, tap your heart right there. Now you, no, no, not no one else. You, you, put that down in your nose. My God, capitalize it. Why owe you and put some exclamation marks over it, you. This is the year where we get out of, get out of the way of our own self. Sometimes it's not people who are tripping us up on going to possess the things that God wants to do in our life. A lot of times, family, it's actually us. We don't believe that we can do it. We don't, we, we don't think that we're qualified to do it. We don't think that we have enough resource to do it. And we can, we can, we can, ha we can have a whole laundry list <laughs> of excuses but hear me when I say this, uh-uh, go do it. Let this be the year you, come on, this is the year where you will go write the plan and make it clear, make it simple so that you can run like you have never ran before and go after the very thing that God is calling you to do because there's a reason behind it. Watch this, walk with me, family. It says, now you and all the people Prepare to cross over the Jordan to, to, to the land I am giving the Israelites. I have given you every place where the sole of your foot threads, just as I promised Moses, your territory will be from the wilderness of Lebanon to the great rivers of the Euphrates River, all the land of the Hittites and west to the Mediterranean Sea. No one, come on. No one will be able to stand against you as long as I shall live. Come on, receive that right now. Come on, in this year, come on, family. See, here's why we're dedicating ourselves to God. Here's why we're consecrating ourselves. 
because we need to come underneath that word of having an understanding that it doesn't matter what comes my way. It doesn't matter what blow that the enemy comes. We're going to go through some stuff. The rain is going to come. The storm is going to come. But my God, come on, somebody. I know it's early in the morning, but I'm being reminded right now of who you are planning on. And that rock has a name and that name is Jesus Christ. So it doesn't matter what comes my way. I'm going to be successful because my God said, wherever my foot goes, it becomes blessed. Wherever my, where my, my present goes, it becomes blessed. So when you walk into that boardroom meeting, come on somebody, the room becomes blessed because the living God that's inside of me is still alive. So this is why we break out in praise. This is why when you're driving, you begin to break out in praise. This is why you wake up early in the morning while you're getting them kids together because I got to get underneath this kind of word. I got to get underneath his word because I got to get an understanding that wherever I go, I'm getting ready to be successful, not because of me, but because of who's inside of me. Come on, somebody say amen. Because of who's inside of me. Everywhere that my foot it's going to go this year. I'm looking for success, God. I'm, I'm looking in, in my finance, wherever my finance go, God, touch it underneath your anointing. Begin to do some math that doesn't make sense. Come on. God, wherever my kids go, come on, whether they're in a school, whether they're doing extracurricular activities, whether they're playing sports, gymnastics, whatever it can be, Father God, let them be underneath your anointing and, 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 and covering and protection. And wherever they go, come on, their foot, my gosh, the ground becomes blessed. Because God said it this way. Receive this family. He said, I have given you the land. I know you're in the wilderness right now. I, I, I let, let me lean into that. I, I know you're in the wilderness right now. I know you're, I know that the terrain looks a little bit different right now. Man, 2023 was a rough year for so many people. Man, the month of December by itself was rough for a lot of people, <laughs> including my, including our family. Like the, the, the year was a rough year. So many things to be grateful for. And here's what I'm framing up. Man, sometimes we can't see what God is promising us because of the terrain that we're now standing on. Can, can you catch the image? God, God is telling them that they're getting ready to go into a place where they no longer have to cultivate the land. It's going to cultivate itself. My gosh, the rain is going to flow. The ground is already going to be fertile. They can't catch it already because they're sitting in dirt, dirt desert, <laughs> where, where things don't grow, that they have to wait for man to come down, where they have to wait for God to produce it. And God is saying, the thing I'm getting ready to shift you with, I know you've been tolling in this area to produce something, but you, you sustain for a season, oh my God, for trusting me. Can you trust me in the wilderness so that I can release you in a promised land? My gosh. Can, 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 will you not curse my name when you're in the wilderness? Will you walk with me where it seems like tomorrow there is no tomorrow? Will you walk with me when you're mourning, when you're grieving, when things are being lost and things are dying in the wilderness and you're confused and you're frustrated and you're saying, God, I don't, I feel like quitting. I feel like throwing in a towel. And God is saying, can you trust me in the wilderness? And now, since you trust me in the wilderness, my gosh, I'm getting ready to release you and cross over into something greater, into something better. I have something so better. Would you come up higher with me? Will you come up higher with me? And then he goes in here. Let's keep reading. I'm in verse, I'm in verse five. It says, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or abandon you. And I love here. Here's we're going to park out in six uh, through six through eight. It says, be strong and courageous. 
For you will distribute the land I swore to the, their fathers to give them as an inheritance. And it says this in seven. It says, above all, underline that, above all. I, I know I said a whole lot, but God is saying, above all, catch this. Above all, be strong and very courageous to observe carefully the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it. Uh-uh. Do not turn from it. Do not turn from it to the right or the left so that you will have success wherever you go. I believe this is important, family. See, when we, the things, let me say it this way, the things that I believe that God is going to share with you in the next 21 days of prayer and fasting, here's what God is saying. I'm releasing to you the design, Anthony. I'm releasing to you the pattern. And, and, and I shared some things with Moses. And I told Moses, don't shift from this pattern. And as long as you stay, as long as you walk according to this pattern, you're going to have success. So now he, here's your self-awareness. Here's your self-evaluation. My gosh, what is the pattern that you're calling me to walk out? W what are you speaking to me and my spirit in this year, in this month, in this first quarter of, of starting strong and starting sharp and kicking off a good year? What is the pattern that you're calling me to? What are you telling me that I should not turn left or right and I, I should stick according because God is saying, and when I stick according to this design, my gosh, we're going to have good success. And then he says, this book of instructions must not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Heaven, I command you, be strong and courageous. My gosh, be strong. Hear me when I say this, family, be strong. It's in your stretch that you will find your strength. Write that down. It's in your stretch that you will find your strength. And when God begins to stretch you, it's because God is putting you in a specific uncomfortable position so that you can realize how strong you really are. If 2023 has taught me anything, it has taught me that my God will show up when I'm at my weakest. If 2023 has shown me anything, it has shown me that God has shown me that, Anthony, you are stronger than, the, than what you really think you are. It's, Anthony, that you are more resilient than you think you really are. But here's the perspective. Here's where we lose what God has shown us. It's not for us to play, play victim, man. I went through this. No, 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 no. Here's what God is saying. I'm showing you how strong you are so that you can use the very strength that you have. We have resilience people all over this chat right now. We have that their resilience in their life, their resilience in their marriage, their resilience on a workplace, their resilience in the marketplace, their resilience in their finance, their resilience in their health. There's resilience all over this place. In other words, there's power and purpose all over this place. Can I say it this way? Everything that we need is right here in this room. Because your story matters and your story is not to be placed under a rock. Your story is to be placed on top so it can shine and glorify God. And God is, if God is in a position, come on, walk with me. God is in a position where he's getting ready to use your testimony like he has never used it before. And God is in a position where he wants to push you and showcase you. But God is saying, walk according to my design. Walk according to my design. My gosh, You're, I, I'm saying it again because it is time in this season, hear me family, to get out of the boat and walk on the sea and trust God out in the deep. 
And here's what you're going to catch because this is going to be a place where it's uncomfortable. But here it is, my friend, nothing grows in a comfortable position. It only grows when the uncomfortable shows up. And what I'm continuing to learn more in my life when God is ready to stretch me, it's because he's ready to grow me. It's because he's ready to produce something. So if you feel a little bit uncomfortable right now, maybe God is putting you in a birthing position because you're getting ready to push something out in this year, but you're just having some contractions right now. You're just going through some pain right now. But hear me when I say this, don't quit. Don't quit. You got another push in you. I know it's January. You got another push in you. I saw a post. I saw a post uh, not too long ago, and they said, man, 2025 is going to be my year. They they already gave up on the year. 2025 is my year. They're like, man, we only one, two weeks in. So 2025. No, don't quit. Don't turn to the left or the right. No, God called you to it, and he's going to see you through it. Don't quit. Because here's what. God showed me four things in this text. I think this is appropriate. It showed me four things to, 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 to kick off our time together. The first one is this, write this down. That Joshua, Joshua was to know the word. Joshua had to know the word. Read the scripture. This is the book of law. This is what they, they, they used to read it out loud to, to, to the people, uh, to, 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 to the whole Israelites, uh, Israel. And 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 God God is telling Moses to 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 make sure don't forget the law, and in order to don't forget it, it must mean that he had to spend time and understand it. It must mean that he actually had to have his eyes on it. It must mean that he actually had to give his ears to it. And it, 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 and God is telling Moses don't. So it lets me know. Point number one: Joshua was to know the word. And this is why we said, even in our point, hey, spend time underneath God's word. Get in his word this, this, this year. Next 21 days, like I said, give God a strong 30. Every single day. That's what we're doing right now. Give God a strong 30. What do I mean by that? 10 minutes, worship. 10 minutes, praying. 10 minutes, in his word. You have something great that you can say, God, I'm give you a strong. So Joshua had to know his word. The second one is this, Joshua was to talk about God's word. It said, do not let this word depart from where? Your mouth. My God, there's power in your mouth. Do not let Joshua, what you're getting ready to cross over into, we're going to get into, we're going to be saying the work that what God was allowing Joshua and his people to do. He said, do not allow because when you get over there, there are going to be other things that's going to allow, that's going to try to take away from your voice. Mm. On your job, there can be things that want to take away your voice. Mm. On you, when you get around your family, there could be some things, my gosh, that wants to take away your voice. And maybe you've been in a season where things been trying to silence you and not use your voice. But you're not, you, so you. this is why we have to continue to speak his word, not my word, not my preference or my opinion, but I, we have to speak his word because his word is the thing that has power. His word is the thing when demons begin to tremble. Come on, somebody. It's his word where, 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 where walls begin to fall. Come on, it's his word when the Red Sea has to be departed. I'm speaking to your life right now. It's not your preference. It's his word. Speak his word today. And then he goes into the third one is this. It said Joshua was to meditate on God's word. It's that Joshua had to actually get away. Get some quiet time. Sit with God. Man, what, what does sitting with God look like in this season of your life? What, what, what does that intentionality of making sure that you get, that you separate, separate yourself from the noise so that you can sit under his word, sit in his presence? We were teaching his word yesterday in church that when, 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 when Moses received the, ten, the, the commandments, 
He went up and um, I'm skipping at the commandments, the uh, instruction for the tabernacle. When Moses went up for six days, catch that family for six days that for six days, God did not speak a word. And then on the seventh day, God finally called out to Moses. Man, man, even at even at the church talking to um, Jay Diaz made a great point. And I, I wish I would have preached it. It's, it. That's an entire message by itself. But look at the look at the Moses actually had to climb the mountain. That's work in itself. Sometimes we can just read over that. <laughs> Moses climbed the mountain and move on to the next scripture. Now that's some work by itself <laughs> to climb the mountain. In other words, catch this. There had to have been some intentionality to get into the presence of God. There had to be some effort. They had, they had to, he had to move into the presence of God. So by, he climbed the mountain, that's work. Then he gets up there because God called him. And for six days, come on somebody, six days, God did not speak a word. Let's be honest. After a day of climbing this mountain, I'm like, God, you're not here. I'm, I'm about to go back down. I'm about to go back down. I, day two is Tuesday. You still ain't say nothing. Thursday, you still ain't say, God, you, you told me to come up here. I'm tired. I'm by myself. You're not speaking nothing. And then on day seven, God called Moses from, from, uh, from inside the cloud. My God, what does it look like to sit under his word? Can we stay under his word long enough until he speaks? Man, God, I'm not moving to this spot. I'm not moving from this spot. You got something that my, my soul needs, Lord God. And I'm not moving from this spot. And then the fourth point is this, and this is where we're going to close right here. It says that it says Joshua's to obey God's word in its entirety. He said, don't depart from this. Don't turn from the left or the right. So here's the notes that you're taking. If you're taking notes, begin to answer those questions. Here's what you're chewing on. This is what that's something I'm going to be using throughout our time together for the next three weeks. Hey, chew on this. Chew on this. What, what is God telling you to obey in this season of your life? Share that with your, your, your family. Share that with your kids, your friends, co-workers. Hey, what in this season? Because this is going to be your year where you are going. This is going to, we believe, hey, this is going to be your best year because it's going to be your best spiritual year ever. We're going greater. We're not going to quit. We're going to keep doing it. And we're going to keep moving forward in the presence of God. Amen.